Hi, thank you very much to the conference organizers for inviting me to this wonderful meeting. It's really an honor to uh, lecture at the EACTA ECHO course, and, uh, and Spain is, of course, uh, just fantastic. So my name is Madhav Swaminathan. I work at Duke University Medical Center, and it's an honor for me to be associated with the leadership of the American Society of Echocardiography. It's a, it's a great organization of about 17,000 echo enthusiasts, um, and, and I strongly encourage you to take a look at the ASC. If you're not a member already, I think you should strongly consider becoming one and supporting echocardiography the way you all do, which is the reason why you're all here. Now, before I begin about LV function, RV function assessment with 3D echo, I just want to make sure that everyone knows. It's not really in three dimensions. You know, it's really two dimensions you're looking at. When you're looking at the screen, you're looking at a two-dimensional screen. It just looks like it's three-dimensional because of all the um, rendering that's been done to make it look like three dimensions, but it's, it's actually just two dimensions. If it was in three dimensions, you could turn it around and look at it. Unless you wear three-dimensional glasses or something like that, you have to recognize that there's a lot of engineering that has gone on to make this two-dimensional image look like a three-dimensional image. Of course, data is acquired in three dimensions, but the way it's displayed is very ingenious. It's, can, it can only be displayed in two dimensions on a screen, but it's made to look like three dimensions with a very innovative use of color and depth. So that's the first thing, you know, you've got to understand the limitations of the technology that you're looking at before you start using it to your advantage. I don't have any relevant disclosures. As an outline, I'll talk about the goals of echo assessment for LV and RV uh, assessment with 3D echo, which modes to use, and I'll repeat a little bit about what Dr. Boucher went through uh, a little while ago. Also talk about technique and uh, give provide some data on what the, the studies show about 3D echo versus some other uh, modalities, um, and, and also you know, cross between different kinds of diseases and techniques and vendors. So we'll talk a little bit about that, and we'll summarize at the end. Uh, and at the bottom of the screen, you'll see this sort of timeline where I'll go through different aspects of my talk. So what are the goals of echo assessment? So initially, we want to look at the structure. We want to look at function. In all of ECHO, these are the only two things we want to do. You know, as I answered earlier to the gentleman's question up there in terms of targeted, focused approach, I always boil it down to the two or three things that I need to focus on. So with, with ECHO, you're basically looking at structure and function with just about everything that you do. In terms of structure, you want to consider hypertrophy, septal defects perhaps, thrombi, aneurysms. In terms of function, you want to look at volumes, ejection fraction, and perhaps wall motion. So these are the kind of things you want to focus on. In terms of echo assessment, you want it to be independent from geometric assumptions, ideally. And this is what Stefan just said a little while ago. You want to be able to identify landmarks consistently. You want to have simultaneous assessment of the entire structure, ideally. And you want semi-automated methods for quantification. Now, the reason why I say semi-automated is because, well, we want some help. We want it to automatically identify borders for us. Right? But we want to have the ability to manually uh, adjust some of those if the machine has made an error, because we always think we are better than those machines. So which modes should you use, especially for LV assessment? Well, it depends upon what you like, what you want, and what you need. And very often, you want everything. You don't need everything, but you want everything. And so. You know, again, in the first lecture by Stefan, you know, he talked about say, spatial resolution, temporal resolution, and volumes. You pretty much have to pick two of those, right, at the expense of the third. If you want good temporal and spatial resolution, you'll probably have to take a very small slice, so you'll lose volume. You want big volume, good spatial resolution, you won't get many frames. So you have to pick two out of those three. So again, it depends upon what I want to do. So again, try and keep it focused. So the question is, which is the structure that I'm looking at, right? And so if I look at it and I say, this is a large volume, and I've put different structures here, but let me focus on that left ventricle because that's what the talk is all about. So if it's a large volume, the answer is yes. The LV is a, you know, it's a large volume. It's a, it's a big structure that I need to look at. Do I want high temporal resolution? Well, here, yes, I do. And the reason is that because when I want to track volumes, I want to basically assess volumes in three dimensions, in cyst n cystly, and in n diastole. Those are the two volumes that I need, and that will give me my ejection fraction, right? And the n diastolic volume will tell me exactly what my diastolic function is like also. 
But here's the problem. But 